Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are going to be discussing the relegation battle. We did it a couple of weeks ago, or three games ago. We did a little little chat and we decided we're going to do it again for three reasons. First of all, we said we'd would. Second of all, we like talking about it. And third of all, did really good views on the last one. So here we are. That's hey, the, at, least, at least we're honest on Harry's chat. Um, uh, Gonzo, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you, mate. All right. I feel a lot better about the, um, about the relegation running. Let's put it that way. What about yourself? Yes, likewise. Um, well, well, let's take a look at the league table first of all. This is how the Premier League table stands at the minute. This is the relegation battle. You can see Southampton bottom there on 23 points. West Ham in 15 on 31. And Wolves sitting 13. Crystal Palace with three wins under their belt under Roy Hodgson um, on 36 points. So that's your relegation battle league table there. Um, Gonzo, let's kick off with Southampton, shall we? I mean, they're looking doomed. Yes. Yes, sorry, I couldn't look happier, could I? Um, it's nothing against, <laughs> whoops, nothing against Southampton. They're, they're perfectly fine, lovely, really nice. Um, and possibly the most convenient game for me to get to as well, unless Reading decided to get into the Premier League somehow. That might be nice. Um, but so I've got nothing against Southampton. It's it's it's, it's great. Um, but we need three teams worse than us. And I think there's certainly one of them. And it's not just that they've fallen down there. Um, they've, I, it seems like they've been down there all season, really. Not so far as they're sort of dropping down there, aren't they? Leicester sort of stayed out of it for a little while. And he so I had a little upturn in form, didn't he, Brendan Rogers? But Southampton feel like they've been down there all the time. And um, I just I think you can only resist that pressure for so long. And it's almost season after season in a lot of respects as well. I think sometimes it, it, it just it, it tells. And despite them doing some some decent recruitment and having some good players there, in fact, there's nothing wrong with their recruitment. Actually, it's just it's almost too little, too late. That the, the the recruitment needed to be better three or four years ago. I, I do feel this is it's almost the last straw that broke the camel's back at the moment. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said. A couple in the last couple of weeks, they've had some really important fixtures, including one against us, Crystal Palace, and they've lost them. And when you're losing games against the teams around you at the bottom, that only unfortunately results in one thing, which is trouble. And I just can't see them getting out of it whatsoever. I think that's one space absolutely guaranteed to go down. So that leaves two remaining. Whether we think well, we'll discuss them as we go, actually, sure. is whether we think they're uh, locked in as well. But Southampton certainly seems locked in. And um, let's talk Leeds United then. I mean, okay. they had a small boost, if you like. Um, we thought, okay, maybe they've got a little bit of grit about them. But the last couple of performances, Gons, has almost been very disappointing, conceding 11 goals in the last two home games as well. I mean, it's not pretty for Leeds United at the minute. No, so I think what that does is. And, and I, I thought they'd be all right because I thought they had a number one, they got a swagger about um, number two, they got some sort of quite incisive, pacey players. And number three, they've got a hell of a, a, a good home crowd as well. But when you're conceding as many goals as they are, and obviously, you know, it's, it's five, look, it's one thing conceding six to Liverpool, it's another thing conceding five against Crystal Palace. And both those games were at their home ground, they were both at Ellen Road, Geo. These are not games on the road um that being said you go back a little bit and uh, and arsenal put four past them so the goal difference has taken a battering that much we can see i think what it does show though is when you're conceding that many you've got to write off those big games so the big teams will probably beat them newcastle will, will probably beat them man city will, will probably beat them um so then they are really relying on getting the the other the other wins that being said even though they're in terrible form I can see they're playing Fulham, they're playing Leicester, they're playing Bournemouth, uh, they're playing us. You do look at it and you think there's the capacity for them to get a couple more wins, which is probably what they need at the moment. Um, but the advantages that I thought they had had, it's slipping through their fingers. They they can't really, they can't carry on like this. And the next, I do feel the next two fixtures are crucial to them. And of course, they don't enjoy the game in hands um, that, that we do at the moment, which is the other thing to probably consider. So, uh, yes, it's it's going to be tight. If I had to bet on it, which is what we're doing here, I, I would still suggest they survive. Yeah, I would go with that. I think they'll just make it. But that's more out of Leeds from a month ago rather than the last couple of weeks because yeah. the way that their defence has fallen apart. Like you said, I mean, Liverpool 
but going into that one, a little bit flaky, if you like. It was. It's not like you're playing vintage Liverpool. Um, if anything, they've done probably they've actually probably done Liverpool a bit of a favour for the rest of the season, capitulating like that. Because given you know Yacht had gone like a calendar year without a goal, he's got a couple against Leeds. Salah's gone and got a couple. Gakpo scored as well. Trent got to play in a new position and played yeah. very well. So actually, it was almost like the, the perfect training session for Liverpool to set them up for the rest of the season to try and get into some form of European football for next season. So anyone else that's got Liverpool to play this season can say, nice one, Leeds. Thank you very much for that because we're now probably going to play a little bit of a better a little Liverpool that we'll be going to but it's the game against Crystal Palace and I actually thought Leeds played quite well for the first mm. half in that, in that game I thought Leeds had the better chances more chances but the second half was just shocking every time Crystal Palace went forward they were yeah. getting a shot at the end of it and it was even like I mean at least saying Eze they had a little bit of swagger about them but it's not like they were playing like prime Barcelona it was pretty simple to cut through that Leeds midfield and defence and when Gracia first went in it looked like he had them up for it, running well, tactically not too bad. But the last couple of games has just been dreadful. And whoever plays Leeds now, you know you can score two, three goals a game if you want to. And it's not even that difficult. You don't even have to do much. You just have to yeah. put enough pressure on their defence and you will get in. You don't. It doesn't have to be anything tactically clever or anything like that. But I still think, I'm a bit like you, I can't quite see they're going down yet. Um, but... Two wins in their last five as well, Gio. There's yeah. teams below them in much worse form. I've got the form table here, actually, for the entire league. Uh, Aston Villa at the top there. But um, as you can see, Nottingham Forest and Leicester City right down the bottom. Played five, uh, one point each. Southampton, two points in the last five. Brentford, two points at the last yeah. five. So there's your first team on the beach. And then you've got Fulham, the other team on the beach. There's not that many teams sort of uh, giving up with their season, but I think it's safe to say that Brentford and Fulham are firmly in that sort of description, if you like. And like you said, Leeds United have got them coming up as well. So that might just be one of the games where actually they can look to pick up vital points. But that's your form table. West Ham United, eight. We're eighth in the form table. And we're one of the teams that played four because it's done by game weeks rather than the last amount of uh, games. So, yeah, West Ham sitting eighth in the form table there. So it looks quite nice. We'll just leave that up for the rest of the video. Looks quite good. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you look, you know, Bournemouth and Palace have done well there as well. You know, they've, they've done really well. Obviously, Aston Villa, outstanding. But talking about, like, the, the relegation threatened teams, or you, you know, so... You, you got to put this little run together. I'll tell you what it does show. You looked at Fulham down there. And I know, you know, stuff's happening with suspensions and whatnot with Fulham. Uh, there are a few teams, you know, what we've just looked, we've just seen that actually Leeds are going to have to play Fulham. You are going to look at teams like that and, and they're just in just as bad a form as, as Leeds in that sense. So that could be a really interesting one. That could be the pivotal game that keeps them up, you know. And I, I looked at Fulham, I looked at Fulham the other day that I looked at their points and they were safe. So, um, yeah, how much desire are they going to have to really fight it out there um it, it should be interesting they, they could decide who stays up and who doesn't well one team you did get bang on was crystal palace and one team i got incredibly wrong was crystal palace um i've been surprised how good they've been to be honest with you um i mean that's them safe now isn't it they're... yeah that's just barely, honestly barely worth discussing in terms of the rele relegation race. Look, square pegs in square holes. Um, the, the, the great irony, what I will say about Crystal Palace, is great irony is for, for all Patrick Vieira's good work and he wanted to change things, he, he's still left that club with vast players that play wide and all the stuff that Roy Hodgson would want. And I never really felt, I mean, Gallagher was a big part of things there, but I, I never really felt that what, Vieira wanted to do was was get his number 10 get you know that's what he wanted to do that's the type of one he wanted to play and he never really got that guy so in the end they, they left with this was always gonna be perfect for Hodgson they were left with a bunch of functional hard-working good midfielders some pace out wide who were going to really kill people on a counter-attack I mean that's that's meat and drink to um uh to to Roy Hodgson so yeah no no surprise there really yeah, I've started to root for Crystal Palace now because they've still got a lot. I mean, the majority of their fixtures remain in this season against the teams below them in the Premier League. So actually having teams that are safe, I find myself to start wanting them to keep winning. So whenever Palace come up against someone that's below West Ham, I'm like, please, can Palace win this game? Obviously, we've mm -hmm. still got to play them as well. Um, but yeah, is, is there anyone, any manager in the Premier League that is in a better no-lose situation than Roy Hodgson, by the way? 
I mean, every, every everything he does just adds to. I mean, I mean, and I mean anyone. Pep Guardiola, uh, Arteta. Everyone's got more to lose than Roy Hodgson. He's gone in there. He's rescued them. Um, he was a hero for keeping them up before. Uh, he's probably going to retire. He's got. He is in a complete no lose situation. It's it's, it's hero Roy. It's it's really just how big the statue is going to be. Um, really, how much marble is going to go into that statue? Uh, right, well, let's take a quick look at the Premier League again because we're going to discuss Nottingham Forest. Um, they are a side. Uh, um, is free fall harsh? I don't think it is, actually. You can see there four losses and a draw in their last five. Liverpool up next. They're now in the relegation zone. Um, equal points with Everton, but they've got the worst goal difference in the, the league. And I've seen a lot of their football lately, Gonzo, and it's, it's just... There's nothing there. There's just nothing whatsoever to get behind. At least you want to, you can say for Leeds, at least they're still scoring goals, whereas not the Forest aren't even doing that at the minute. No, no, absolutely. And as you say, they've got to play Liverpool next. That's at Anfield. I think the biggest thing for them is they had some home games, which they needed to win. Home games against Newcastle, they lost it. Home game against Wolves, they drew it. Home game against, we've just seen against Manchester United, they lost it. That was it. It was their away form that was the killer. Well, you know what? If your away form's a killer and you're not going to win your home games, then you are going to have problems. You've got Brighton up after that. And Brighton are still an, a menace, an absolute menace to play against that's not going to be easy um you know okay look, they, they've got to play Southampton they've, there's a couple of winnable games in there but they've also got Chelsea mind you Chelsea might be the easiest one of the lot <laughs> hey they, they did well didn't they to get a worse manager uh, who could do worse than Graham Potter Chelsea but they managed it um but then they've also got to play Arsenal it's going to be tough for them Gio and, and I um I don't, I don't, I don't over, I don't overly care um, what happens. Not in Forest, truth, truth be known. Particularly after all that Jesse Lingard stuff, and we got, we got, hey, we got a significant amount of trolling over uh, on this channel for some reason because we missed out on Jesse Lingard. But um, I, so I, I don't, I don't really care much if they go down. Uh, truth be known, at all. I do have certain sympathy for uh, the manager though because I like the way the ownership backed the manager. Unfortunately, what it appears they didn't do in backing the manager, they didn't back the infrastructure around him. So as far as I can see, everybody else except for the manager has had the sack. And I just think, look, I, I've a, it's not just a case of backing the manager. Either back the regime or dismiss the regime. There's no point keeping the manager and dismissing the regime because you've just got a figurehead there who basically doesn't have any support around him. So I think the moment they decide they're going to get rid of everyone else, get rid of the manager as well or keep everyone else and the manager. Uh, but it looks like... So they went to halfway house. It's, 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 it's a very... It's a very good example of indecision there. They didn't seem to know what they were doing. I think they'll probably pay the ultimate price. I, I kind of get why they've decided to start dismissing people in charge of other areas of the club because this, the thing that has gone wrong for Nottingham Forest this season is the transfer strategy mm. or lack of. They spent a lot of money, brought in a lot of players, and some of them have contributed literally nothing. Um, you know, you look at um, Lewis O'Brien, I don't know, can't remember what they paid for him and um, Toffolo to get them out of Huddersfield. It was about 10, 15 million to get both of them there. Toffolo's back up left back, which is fine. And O'Brien wasn't even registered for the second half of the season. So, so you, you're looking at that and going, well, what's the, you, you've just wasted like 10 million, just gone, just like that. There's another 5 million gone, just like that. Got to the January one, there was talk that they were basically having to get, put Emmanuel Dennis out on loan, but because he'd already played for Watford and not in Forest, he would have had to go to a, a club whose season started in January in order to adhere with FIFA regulations where you can only play for two clubs a season unless you go join like a South African team and then you can play for a third one. And it was just an absolute shambles. And I think Cooper is a good manager and I think they've done the right thing sticking by him. And I hope that if they go down, they do stick by him and give another year in championship. I do think they're going to go down because when I watch them, there's a lot of enthusiasm. There's a lot of energy. They're working hard. It's just... It doesn't feel like a squad yet. It doesn't feel like a yeah. team. And that's understandable when, you know, a handful of them were at Nottingham Forest last season and, and that sure. was it. That's all they've got. So Cooper's had to really try and form a spine, which is not difficult. There's been a lot of injuries to certain players as well. Like Nia Cattie's barely played this season, who was quite a big signing for them last summer. So some of the key players they brought in, he's been unable to use. And it's just every time 
when I I could tell you what Aston Villa's eleven is going to be this weekend, right? You could tell me. You could you get nine of the eleven right. You wouldn't even have to look at who they're playing or anything like that. You could just tell me. You know Watkins is going to be up front. You know it's probably going to have Boondi and Ramsey behind him. Um, McGinn might be playing. They'll probably have Douglas Luiz in centre midfield. And Don could play well last week, so he'll probably retain that. Moreno will be left back with Mings next to him. We know Martin. Guess the Nottingham Forest one. I bet you can. You'll get four right, but that's about it. After that, once you've done Johnson and Gibbs White and Fuller, you're thinking, right, okay, who else are they going to mm. pick in? Because we don't know. It's forever. Every time I watch that Forest team, it feels like there's four changes every single week, and that is not good. Like you said, their home form was the one thing that they had going for them, and they don't have that anymore. They played Man United at the weekend. It was quite simple for Man United. Yeah. Nav Aspinall's man of match. When your keeper, when you lose 2-0 and your keeper is a man of match, that's not a good thing. De Gea made literally zero saves. And that Man United team, remember, was without Martinez, without Varane, without Rashford, um, without Luke Shaw. So arguably, the Man United's three best players this season as well as Bruno Fernandes. Only one of them was playing, well, Casemiro as well. So five Man United best players, three of them were not available for selection. Man United turned up, made it look easy. Um, Maguire looked a little bit shaky at times Barely got near him Forest yeah. are bang in trouble And I think they're going down Everton though Gonzo I have to be honest with you I'm surprised mm. I oh. thought they'd be okay With Dyche Well because they, they first uh, Dyche's first game They beat Arsenal Which is one of the surprise Results of the Premier League This season um, I think we've all Guilty of thinking They've got enough But a little while ago Before we played Southampton do you remember when we did the thing? And I said, uh, before we did that, I said, the next two games are crucial. Southampton's were us and Man City. I said, you know, you can't, you, the next two games are, and I, and I did, and I can't, I, I thought we'd be down if we'd have lost our next two, which we didn't. I thought if they'd have lost their next two, I, I think, that, you know, and they did. Um, we, we're, we're very much into that territory now. So they're just hovering above it now. But, their next fix, they've got to go to Selhurst Park, which we've already discussed. That is not easy when you're nervous. Um, they're not going to give him a lot. Hodgson's not going to give Dyche a lot. You know, he's not going to, they're not going to allow themselves to be overly counterattacked. Crystal Palace, by the way, they'll be the ones doing the counterattacking. Um, and then, uh, and then they've got ever, um, they've got Newcastle in a game afterwards. Now, and after that, so they got two really tough games. Then they've got the game that may well decide their season, which is against Leicester City. It's going to be really, really tough for them. They've still got to play Brighton. They've still got to play Man City. They do finish with Wolves and Bournemouth. But it ain't. It, 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 this is not nailed on survival. They're going to have to work really hard to survive. And, and, I, and I think it's this, this one extra space of, you know, Forest look like, I think we both agreed, Forest um, and Southampton both look like they're down in our reckoning. And that's leaving one. Let's leave him one. We've both already hinted that we think Leeds are out of it. So if you've been following this video, you'll you'll know that it's either Everton or Leicester City that, that individually we think is going to go down. It is not nailed on that Everton stay up far from it. One win in the last five, although they do have a couple of draws. I, I thought they'd be okay with Dice. I thought that was the appointment, I think. Some transfers make sense. Some manager appointments make sense. And I thought Sean Dice to Everton was good. I thought then, obviously, when they beat Arsenal, you're like, ah, this is just what he's going to do. Sure. But I have to be honest with you, up until the literally their last fixture, I still thought they'd be fine. But losing at home to Fulham was... We've just seen Fulham down at the bottom of the form table. Not good. We've played Fulham. We know how poor they looked. Yep. So to lose to them, that is one of the... When you look at a fixture list, uh, everybody does it. You think, well, we might pick up a point here, point here, three here, and three here. That gives us five. We need, oh, bugger, you know, that's it. We, there's no there's no room for error anymore. We need X amount of points. My, my tally adds up to bang on X. There's no there's no margin for losing two. No. Everton fans would have looked at their fixtures and had three next to Fulham at home. They would have said, well, have you seen them against West Ham? They were dreadful. Three points there, please. Typical Sean Dice job. To lose that fixture is... Oh, that mm. if I was an Everton fan, that would have put my nerves through the roof. Um, it, it, even as a neutral, I looked at it, I thought that is not good, that is not good whatsoever. I agree with you, it's between Everton and Leicester, and I think my opinion as to whom is going down out of those two will change between now and the end of the season. I still think Everton will just scrape it, Gonzo. I, I think they will. I think, and it's because of Sean Dice. It's still because of him. I still think he will do okay. But there's talk yesterday on social media. They had a behind closed doors friendly. Was it with Bodenwood or something? And they played the likes of Connor Cody, Calvert-Lewin. And they got beat. I mean, that's not... 
<laughs> they played like a that. national league side in a bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there was there was only six or seven first team players named as playing, but they lost, and you just think that's not a good indicator. Um, that's not good. But Everton, wow, I well, we got, we got the Southampton situation going on there a bit, yeah. Geo, which is a cumulative effect of. As a lot of managers, they've tried now and that hasn't worked, which probably suggests there's something else wrong at that club. And and, and I, I know I, I from a distance, I see, you know, the, the Bill Kenwright's taken, you know, a lot of stick there. I, I I don't know. I did from the outside. He just sort of looks like a figurehead. Is, is, is it Mashiri that, that can't do it? I don't know. But what, what I, one thing I do know is, is if you were trying multiple managers, they clearly have had a, a an excellent transfer budget in the last five years. So if, if the problem's not money uh, and the problem's not managers, because the moment you try lots of them, it's not all the manager's fault. They, they, you know, you chuck enough what's it at the wall, some of it's going to stick. Then you've got to suggest that it's something else within the club. And if there is some bad stuff going on within there behind the scenes, then that's going to be very, very hard to shake. And it would suggest that there's a little bit more than getting 11 players out on a pitch who are coached well might not be enough there might be it's just too much as i say the last like i said with southampton the last straw that broke the camel's back you may well find that this really is it for everton it was actually just really it's just a poorly poorly run club what they say a, a fool and his money are easily parted maybe it's got nothing to do with money maybe it is just the whole thing is basically run by a bunch of fools and eventually something has to give wolves look very safe yep could get dragged into it, but I think it would take some of a disaster in order for them to go down at this point. Well, less than next. So um I think their next three games are all teams um in the relegation battle. Well, I got I got Wolves, Palace and Brighton, the next three. But um uh, sorry, Leicester, uh, Palace and Brighton, the next three, then Villa, then Man United, then Everton, then Arsenal. The so fixtures ain't pleasant. great. No. The fixtures are not great for them at all. Um I, I, I would think not, because I, I, I would think, you know, I'd like to think form has something to do with it. And actually, they their last five games, actually, all right, there's, there's drawn one and one two, but they were the last three games. Actually, they've, they've, they're undefeated in their last three games. That You'd think there's enough momentum there um, to keep them safe. The Leicester one is is massive. That This is this is where it comes down to, this part of the season. The Leicester game is massive. Our, our game with Bournemouth is massive. Yeah. Um, their one with Leicester's, you know, pretty damn huge. Ah. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, a point would be lovely for Wolves in that, actually. They'd, they'd take the point there. Uh, I'm not sure that's too good for Leicester. Before we discuss Leicester City, the last and final team, we are going to opt out every week to do their little update as to their algorithm. Who's getting relegated? What's the probability mm. of each team getting relegated? They use the results thus far. They use your remaining fixtures. They take into consideration your results against those teams last season. So they they, they plow a lot of things into that algorithm. I don't really know how it works. They're not going to tell us. It's their algorithm. But this is the end result as of Tuesday. So this is following Liverpool's thrashing of Leeds United. You can see there they've got, uh, you're, look, you're looking at the middle column there. Uh, so they've got Southampton with a 93.6% chance of going down. Um, so they're pretty much down. Forest on 74.4. Everton are the next likeliest to go down on 57.8. And the Lex and Leicester City are just going to do it with a 46.4% chance of getting relegated. Leeds, they think, will be fine, 23.5, which hasn't really changed despite losing 6 win at home. West Ham are on 2.1%, Bournemouth 1.6%, and Wolves on a 0.5% chance of relegation. So that's what the stats say. But what do you say about Leicester City? Well, it's it's a weird one. I don't think they're suffering with the um, with the years of of bad stuff that I mentioned at Southampton um, had had, and what I'd mentioned at Leeds had. I don't think they're suffering um, from that. I think this is this is relatively localized, as I understand it. A lot what a lot of money was lost by the the ownership. Obviously, the father died sadly in the, in a helicopter crash. Uh, I think a lot of it was tied up in airports and that sort of thing. I, I think pretty much um, might have been air traffic control or or something like something that got absolutely decimated and wasn't used and received no funding during COVID. I think I think they I think they're in, in peril. The business that that owns um, Leicester City. So because of that, you've got a different problem, which is hemorrhaging players that, that don't get replaced and you get a lack of investment in the first team. I really don't think that it's it's overly helped um, 
the way that some of it's been handled. I think it was protracted with Fafana. Probably could have been handled better. I'd like to have seen some of that sorted out earlier. And I think they got suited. Did they get suited in, in the end? But um, was it them? Was them got suited from Stoke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Um, but that was they still had to wait a whole transfer window for that to happen. Um, I did that. Fafana should have been dealt with earlier. Should have been replacement coming, even if they whatever, put 15 million towards the club and kept 15 million uh, to invest in it. Uh, I think the Tillemans thing, it just hasn't worked. Retaining him for that extra time hasn't worked. Um, regardless of whose decision it was to stay, that probably should have been sorted. I think too much, too much reliance on um, on Jamie Vardy. I have to absolutely... Um, I, it's funny you mentioned on your video the other day about Patson Dacker because I was looking at him the other day as well, thinking I still wouldn't mind him at West Ham. Actually, uh, I, I think he's pacey. I think he's got a lot about him. It's funny, and we hadn't even had a discussion. You and no. I, so it's funny to hear you discuss it on your video. Um, but there's still too much reliance on on, on Jamie Vardy. I always felt that Ian Acho. I never wanted him at West Ham. We were linked to him. Uh, I always thought he was a bit of a flash in the pan. He was a bit streaky. He had a really good period, and, and then that was that was about it. Too much reliance on that. They do have some good players, but I, I just wonder if the downturn is too much. Uh, for them, their next three games, and listen to this, their next three games are Wolves, Leeds United and Everton. It's all in their hands. It's all in their hands. After that, they've got Fulham. Now, OK, granted, they, they finish up. They finish up with Newcastle, Liverpool and the final game of the season, West Ham. But they absolutely have it within their hands to get it wrapped up in the next four games. They can make themselves safe. And whilst I do think that there was an element, an absolutely an element of Man City taking their foot off the pedal, I, I do believe that. Um, I'm not even... Uh, the commentary didn't match that. They were, you know, very much uh, that they were coming back into it. I'm, I'm not sure that's really what happened. But I do feel that... that the manager, uh, Dean Smith, isn't it? The former yeah. um, Norwich and Aston Villa manager. I do feel that he can get something out of them. And it's not got to be brilliant because there are players there. Uh, Harvey Barnes, you, you like very much yourself. They do have good midfielders there. There is a striker there that can terrorise defence. They've, they've got good options out wide as well. And they have enough about them to, to shore it up in central defence if, if they need to. I think there might just be enough there. And they're not, they haven't got the depressed hangover from years and years and years that I think Everton have. So I think, even though they're lower down than them, there is a chance. But points look bad, Gio. They've played 31 games and they have 25 points. To put it into perspective, to context, OK, we've got 31 here. Now, the thing is with Everton, Everton only got two more points. So Leicester City's goal difference is better. At the moment, I'm going to go with you. I think Everton drop down and Leicester City just get out of it. But they can't be leaving it till their last game of the season about, I think, against us. They need to be dealing with it now because before they get to us, they've got two really, really tough games. The next four are winnable. If they win two of them, um, then they give themselves a real good fighting chance. See, the bad thing is if they win two of them, it, they sort of get out the bottom three. But the good thing is they suck two teams back into that relegation mm. big time. It's sort of win-win yeah. for West Ham with these Leicester fixtures coming up, really, because mm. someone's dropping points that's in that relegation battle, and that's always a good thing. I get yes. worried when teams around us play teams like Brentford and Fulham, where mm. I'm like, oh, no, there's only one outcome here, which is that team yes. winning. But when two teams below us or around us play each other, I think it's sort of win-win. Someone's, yeah. someone's missing out. Even a draw is fine because they both drop two points. Happy days kind of thing. Mm. Um, I think I think with Dean Smith, he's... I, I think one of the first things he did, I think he did something right and something wrong against Man City. The one thing he did right was bringing Soyuncu back into the fold, who yes. Brendan John, Brent Rodgers had just excluded completely because... He's off at the end of the season. He's not committed. We're not going to play him. Yeah, he continued to play Yuri Tielemans despite, but never mind. Um, so he's just mm. you back in, which I think is a, a, a good call. But I think there was a bit of me when I saw Vardy start, like, why are you doing this? Like the guy, he's, I think he's had three shots on target the whole season or something. I think this guy's, with the greatest respect, he's a, he's a Leicester City legend. He's a Premier League legend. Yeah. What he's done. The story is fantastic, but he's finished. You cannot rely on him to score you the goals and do what you need to do. Ian actually came off the bench. It was 10 times more effective in that period. He was on the pitch against City. But there's the components are there for Dean Smith to build a good Leicester City team that could get them out of this. There, there's yeah. enough, enough individual talent with Barnes, with Tetty, 
with Madison, Inacho, Daka, and to be fair, Jimmy Vardy. He's still a good player. I say he's finished. I don't think you can rely on him, but he might be good for one or two goals between now and then the season. That might just be enough to win you the games. Defensively, it's not as stable as it once was. The keeper's a bit of an issue, but centre back options are fast. Sayunchu so and Suter, there's enough there to get two or even or play back three if you have to. There's enough there. And I think man for man, it's probably better than Nottingham Forest. It's probably better than Leeds United. It's definitely better than Southampton's. It's probably better than Everton's. In fact, they've probably got one of the best teams in the bottom, in the yeah. relegation, in, in terms of individual players. What I said about Cooper, about not having worked with those players, while Smith has it, a lot of those players have been there for a while now. They know each other. It's the, the chemistry should be there. Vardy should know. Madison knows exactly what Jamie Vardy wants up front by now. Harvey Barnes knows what Vardy wants. There's there's no strangers in that team. Um, I think a good manager could get that Leicester team out of it. Whether Dean Smith is that good manager, I'm not 100% sure. I get why they've done it. I do get it. But I just, don't know. Well, I, I, well, look, look, I mean, here's here's the problem that they've really got here is they need three wins and a draw from their remaining fixtures. That's what they need, bare minimum. That's a hell of an ask. They've not won since the 11th of February. So, so to, to get one win has been hard. For them to get three and a draw is going to be difficult. You, you, you've got to factor in. They lost to Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup, you know, at the end of February. They had a really important game against Southampton. They lost it, Gio. They lost it. Um, this this is a problem for them. This really is it. They had an important game against Bournemouth. They lost it. Um, so this is what you're saying now. You know, it's not just, we, we often talk, because that's the way the Premier League display it, the, the form in the last five games, it extends longer than that. So you're asking for a team in really bad form to now, in the remaining fixtures, get three wins and a draw, which is quite good form. That's a big swing. It's a big ask. He's gonna to, for them. He's got a re, he's got to completely change the mindset and the way the team are playing. It's a big ask for a manager to do. If I was a Leicester City fan, I'd be rooting for West Ham big time um, in Europe and in the Premier League. So West Ham are safe when they rock up, and they've got a final as well. So yes. they put out the second team uh, last game of the season. We need to win to stay up. West Ham field the second team. They're already safe. It could arguably be the perfect fixture for them. Likewise, we rock up there needing to win. It is one of the worst fixtures they could have as well. Just like it, it was one of the worst fixtures we could have. Yeah, but sure. if West Ham can go there safe with a, a Conference League final coming up, I thought you wouldn't get a better fixture as a Leicester. Uh, Leicester City could not get a better fixture than that um, no. in, in order to play. Because as West Ham fans, we'd be saying, Moyes, do not play Declan Rice. Do not play this Zuma. Do not play this player. Put out the kids if you have to. Do not risk anyone. Um, and I know people say, well, that's not very fair. I don't really care. You've got 30, 38 games to manage your, your season. Um, oh, yeah. If you get to the point where you can put the kids out, then well done you. Um, it's not up to anyone else you're in control so just to just to finalize it who's your three to go down uh so I just say southampton forest i'm saying leicester going i'm saying i am i am as well actually i've talked myself into it i know i said everton but i've talked myself into it that's too big a swing of form they, they've not won they've not won since the start of february how are they going to get three wins and a draw leicester are going down there you go. You heard it here. Uh, if you enjoyed our relegation battle chat, please do drop a like on the video. Scout you to Hammers chat. Let us know what you think in the comments below. But myself and Gonzo agreeing on this one. Southampton, London Forest and Leicester City currently are the three we think are getting relegated from the Premier League this season. We'll catch you in a bit. 